Everyone lift your two hands. And with a loud voice, say thank you, Jesus. Make it louder. Say thank you, Jesus. The loudest you can say thank you, Jesus. If truly you are set for a touch from heaven tonight, let those two hands be above your head. And with a loud voice, go ahead and give God some more thanks and praise now. Give God thanks and praise. Bless his name. Honor him. Appreciate him. Give him glory. Give him all honor. Give him all adoration. We give you all the glory. All the praise. All the honor. All the adoration. We celebrate your faithfulness, mighty God, for your move in our midst, for your awesome power. We give you praise. There is no one like you. Father, thank you for what you do for us week in, week out, day in, day out on this mountain. We are so thankful. We are so grateful. We don't take your acts for granted in our midst. We bless your name. We thank you for what you are going to do tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Father, we want to especially thank you tonight. Thank you because our gathering is unto you and you alone. Not unto any man or any woman. Lord, we ask that you open the windows of heaven upon us tonight. Holy Spirit, teach us what we need to know. Bless us abundantly. Amen. Answer our prayers, O God. Amen. And we promise to return all the glory to you. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. I say, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Everyone give Jesus a big hand of praise. Make it louder, make it better. Amen, amen, amen. And you just welcome your neighbor to the right and to the left. Tell them, my brother, my sister, you are welcome tonight. You are welcome to church. God bless you in Jesus' name. Please be comfortably seated in God's presence. Amen. Praise the Lord. I welcome every one of you tonight to this special service, the God of Elijah prayer meeting. And I'm trusting God as usual that the God of Elijah that we have come to meet with, he will meet with us in the name of Jesus. We want to especially thank the name of the Lord and bless God for his faithfulness, his acts, his wonders in our midst, culminating in massive testimonies. And we're trusting God that the aftermath of tonight's prayer will result in yet more and more commotion of testimonies. Amen. I was thinking your amen will be louder. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Tonight, we're going to examine a little topic, we'll do a short teaching, and we're going to be praying. And the topic tonight is help us in your work and business help us in your work and business help us in your work and business and I'd like us to read from the book of Psalms 121 Psalms 121 and verse 1 before we go into what we have to do, I want us to see something clean, clear first. Psalms 121 and verse 1. Everybody, can we read it together with a loud voice? One, two, ready, read. My eyes unto the hills from where? Go to verse 2. My help cometh from the Lord, which made. Now, I will, that's David speaking. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. I will lift up. The first qualification, the first 
criteria you need to meet if you must experience God's help is that your eyes must be up. Your eyes must not be fixed on man. Your eyes must not be fixed on women, on family members, on in-laws, on friends, in highly placed positions, politicians, governors, great time business moguls and all of that. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. Criteria number one, you must look up if you must experience God's help. And the Bible tells us that our God is in the heavens and he has done whatsoever he pleases. I will lift up my eyes. Every Christian, you must learn to do away with alternatives in your brain if you must experience God's help. Many a times, most of us Christians, we claim we are trusting God. Oh, I trust God. But, I mean, you know, God looks at the heart. He knows that that God you say you are really trusting is a lie. Is that uncle in that office that you have at the back of your mind? If only this, my uncle can do this. If only this, my brother-in-law can do this. If only this, my whatever can do this. He knows. The Bible says God searches the thoughts and the intents of the heart of man. The Bible says God looks at the inward. Man looks at the outward. So the first criteria to qualify for God's help is to learn to look up. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From where is that help I'm looking for coming from? It's coming from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. Now, that takes me to the next discourse. Will God come down to do anything for anybody? No, absolutely no. So what you do is to look up to him. What God does is to arrange the men and the women, the mercenaries that he will use to bring the help to you. Can I hear your loud amen to that? Amen. Do you understand what I just explained to you now? So yours is not to look at that man. Yours is not to look at that woman. No, yours is not to look at that, your father, whatever, uncle. No, rubbish. Yours is not to look at them. Yours is to fix your gaze on God. It is now God's prerogative to choose the people he will use. To choose the people he will use. Because if God does not touch the heart of any man, of any woman, they ain't going to do nothing for you. No matter how close they are to you. They might be helping millions of people around you when it comes to your turn. They turn their face. I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made the heavens and the earth. Remember, we are talking about help us in your work and in your business. So what you do is to cry to God, to trust God, to send help us to your work, to send help us to your business. Then God decides who and who to pick, the organizations, the arrangements, the equipment, the resources, human resources, financial resources, material resources, whatever. Then he makes them available and sends them your way. Can I hear your loud amen to that? So I'm going to be prophesying a lot to you tonight before we switch into full prayers. But of course, you know the deal. Your loud amen is needed to activate those prophecies. Let's start from 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 26. The book of 1 Samuel chapter 10 and verse 26. The Bible says, And Saul also went home to Gibeah, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. Whose hearts God had touched. Whose hearts God had touched? It is God that touches the heart of people for them to be able to help you. You've heard me say too many times from this place. Haven't you seen men and women that are related to presidents of nations and they are still poor? Oh, you've not seen? I have seen a few. People that are related to governors of states and they are still poor. They are related to senators and they are still poor. And I mean related, not just a distant cousin. Related one on one. They have their numbers, but yet their life is nothing to write home about. People related to men and women, great men and women of God, great businessmen, great businesswomen. And yet you look at their life, they say, that person is niece to this man. You say, that's not true. They say, yeah, it's his niece, for real. As a matter of fact, look at this person, they share the same last name. And some people show you pictures to see that they are really related. You know why? Not because those big men and women are bad. It is just because God has not touched their heart. 
That's why I'm praying for somebody tonight on the premise of that verse. The people that must help you, that must help your children, that must help your spouse, that must help you click that deal, that must help you get that proposal done, that must give you your heart desires. In the name of Jesus, from tonight, God himself will begin to touch their hearts one by one. Oh, come on, I don't like that. Amen. God will begin to touch their heart. Ah, talking about Esther, the Bible says, Then could the king not sleep. Do you know that after tonight's impartation, some people will be losing their sleep because of you? <laughs> you know, I used to work with a pastor one time. Some years ago, back in Nigeria. And we were in the office one morning. <laughs> the, the receptionist just started calling me. We were at the third floor. And the receptionist just started calling me. I said, Pastor, you have to come down. I said, what is it? He said, there is somebody here that wants to see that deal. He said, you are not on the list. He said, you must see. He's trying to make trouble. So I said, OK. So I went downstairs. And I saw the man. He's a Muslim guy dressed like you know the northern regalia type of a thing. I mean, from his face, I could tell he was a northerner. He's dressing, his accent, everything. So I went to him. I greeted him. I said, how are you, sir? He said, I'm fine. I said, what is it? He said, I need to see a senior pastor. I said, well, I'm sorry, sir. Um, you need to be on schedule. He already has people that he's seen today. Um, did he give you an appointment one-on-one? -on -one? He said, no. He said, I've never met him before. I said, so what do you want to see? If you say, I just need to see him. Ah. He was, he said, he won't leave this place. If, ah, I said, well, there's trouble. I said, okay, hold on. So I went back upstairs. I knocked the office of the senior pastor. I said, sir, there is, we have a situation downstairs and this is it. I said, okay, he said, let him come. So I went downstairs. I took the man upstairs. And when he got there, <laughs> he said, I know you don't know me. My name is Alaji XYZ. I came all the way from, he mentioned where he came from that early morning. I don't know, maybe he took a private jet or something, we don't even know. Because I'm trying to calculate in my head how he could get a flight that early to Lagos. He said, I came in from whatever. He said, okay, what is it? What can I do for you? He said, in the middle of the night, one old man, very old man, I cannot describe the man's age, kept appearing to me and said, go to your account. Get, get with your bank, what do you call those, account officers. Get 400 million naira cash and take it to that my servant. He needs it. He said, and the man wouldn't let me sleep. He said, the man kept flogging me with cane until you take the form. He said, I could not sleep. That's why. Then the man of God looked at him. So where is the money? He said, cash is downstairs with my driver inside the car. I'm telling you years ago. God is the one that touches people's heart. The man of God knew nothing. He just came to his office to come and do his normal thing. So somebody appeared to me and said, I should bring this 400 million for you that you need it. Lift up your right hand. The men and women that must help you, that must push you to the next level, that must assist you from this very hour, Wherever they are all over the world, let the Lord begin to touch their hearts one by one. Your helpers will not be able to sleep. <laughs> I said they will not be able to sleep. But we send the Holy Ghost after them. I said we release the Holy Ghost after them. The Lord will begin to touch their hearts from tonight. The people that must help that your business help you get that contract, the Lord will touch their hearts. In the name of Jesus Christ, say an amen like a Christian. First Chronicles chapter 12. I mean, I want to encourage every one of you when you get home, when you have your leisure time, you need to read this whole story. You know, we talk so much about David in the Bible. One of the major secrets of David, why he became the most successful king in Bible times, and even till date, David is the most celebrated man in the entire nation of Israel. Till date. He's a man that died about 3,000 years plus ago. One of the major strengths of David was that he had helpers of destiny. Somebody say, we may help us of destiny. 
So when you have your leisure time, I encourage every one of you to read this. First Chronicles chapter 12, from verse 1 to the end. I think it has 40 verses in there or so. Read it from the beginning to the end. And coin out your prayers from all those verses. But I'm just going to pick a few verses from there so that we can move on quickly. Look at uh, verse 1 of this first Chronicles chapter 12. It said, now these are they that came to David to Ziklag. While he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish, and they were among the mighty men, the helpers of war. They were among the mighty men. God will send mighty men to you. Amen. What kind of amen is this? I said the Lord will send mighty men to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. They were among the mighty men. Helpers of war. Mighty men. David had an empowered team. Spiritually, financially mighty men, talented mighty men, helpers of the world, helpers of work and business. I prophesy to somebody tonight, in the name of Jesus, the Lord will send helpers to your work. Oh my goodness. I said the Lord will send helpers to your work. The Lord will send helpers to your business. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at the resume of this man, verse 2. Verse 2, the Bible says, they were armed with bows. Armed, they were armed. You need men and women that are loaded with resources around you. That before you turn to the right, you turn to the left, they are there, sir, ma, what do you need? This is what I need, they supply it. It makes your journey in life easier. When there are people that, that are armed with resources. He said, and they could use both the right hand and the left in hurling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow, even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. They were using both their right hand and their left. We call such people ambidextrous human beings. They use both sides of their brain. They are super smart. Before you blink your eye, they know the next thing you need. You say, sir, we know you need that thing. They provide it. Ma, we know we need Skillful people, gifted people, talented people, selfless people, give us every one of you tonight in the name of Jesus, such men and women, and be dexterous men and women that will be using the both sides of their body, their spirits, soul, and body, and their mind to plead your cause, to ensure that you are fine, to ensure that your children are okay, to ensure that your work and business is progressing. If you can say a loud amen after tonight's impartation, the Lord is sending them your way. The Lord is sending them your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say louder, amen. Go to verse 8 quickly because of time. I told you, make sure you read the whole chapter. Every one of you must read that whole chapter before you come to church on Sunday. Look at verse 8. It said, and of the Gadites, they separated themselves unto David into the hold of the wilderness men of mine. And men of war fit for the battle. Men of war that are fit for the battle. You need men, women, you need youths that are fit to support your work and your business. Fit for the battle. Fit for the battle. And the Bible says that could handle shield and buckler. Look at the next line. Whose faces were like the faces of lions. You know what that means? They were bold, fearless people. Bold men and women. Fearless men and women. Courageous people. Everybody's running. Ah, we can't go. We can't go. They say, what do you mean? Let's go to that office. We will get it. I decree for somebody tonight in the name that is above every other name. Men of war that are fit for your assignment. People with lion faces. Bold people. Daring people. Fearless people. Risk takers. People that will risk their lives to get what you are looking for. With your loud amen. The Lord is sending them your way. The Lord is sending them to your work. The Lord is sending them to your business. Can you say an amen like a believer? Amen. Whose faces were like the face of lions? And were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. You know the meaning of swift? Fast. Quick. With speed. People that are quick-witted. People that are smart. People that are proactive. People that have foresight. Hard workers. I prophesy to somebody. This kind of human beings. This kind of men and women. In the name of Jesus, they begin to look for you from tonight. If you are not going to say amen, I can stop this meeting. I said they will look for you from tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Look at verse 17. Jump, jump, jump to verse 17 quickly. Jump to verse 17 quickly. The Bible says, and David went out to meet them. He went out to meet them. May you receive the spirit of discernment that will make you identify your helpers and for you to run to meet them and grab them. Because can I tell you, there are some people listening to me right now here, some are watching online. Do you know why your journey has been longer? Because God has sent helpers your way, but you were so spiritually blind to identify them. People that you should go to meet, you turn your backs on them. People that you should run to meet, you look down on them. You look at their physical appearance. You judge them by their accent, not knowing that the tools you need for your next level is actually in their hands. Some you judge them by their color. Some you judge them because of their marital destiny. Some you judge them because of their, their, their immigration status. Shame on you. But there is mercy for you tonight if that is your case. Yeah. Somebody was speaking with me one day. and, and uh, was Somebody that I mentor. And he came to me. Was trying to share one idea with me. One business that he was about to start. And he had, had been able to raise a few hundreds of thousands. And he came and said there was this woman that came to him and said they should partner together. And I said, okay, so, so what's delaying you? And he looked at me and said, pastor, she's a single mother. I said, uh-huh, so? He said, ah, I'm thinking she's a single mother. Should I do business with her? If not that he's a very good friend and like a son to me, I would have walked him out of my office. I said, so when has being a single mother become a crime? Being a single mother and so, what, what, what does that mean? Like, I don't understand what you're saying. Are you, he didn't have anything. He says, I'm just thinking, hey, she's not married. She has child. She's not married. Ah. <laughs> and I looked at him. I said, may you not miss your destiny, help us. Yeah. That, that, a single mother. Uh, so? Is she the first to be a single mother? Will she be the last? And I pray for somebody tonight that the spirit of discernment in you will wake up. wake up. And David went out to meet them. As you walk out of this door tonight, you are meeting with your helpers. And answered and said to them, if ye come peaceably unto me to help me, my heart shall be knit unto you. But if you come to betray me to my enemies, seeing there is no wrong in my hands, the God of our fathers look thereon and rebuke it. These were loyal and sincere workers with team spirit. Every one of you with your two hands above your head. Loyal workers. Loyal friends. Not people that will sell you out. Not people that you will eat and drink with them and they will see be the one to do that's your destiny. Loyal workers. Sincere people. That will hold you by the hand and move you to your place of destiny. With your loud amen, the Lord is sending them to you. Can you say louder, amen, people of God? Amen. Go to verse 18. Go to verse 18. The Bible says, Then the Spirit came upon Amasai, who was the chief of the captains, and he said, Thine are we, David. We are on your side. Don't worry. We are with you. Thine are we, David, on thy side, thou son of Jesse. Peace, peace be unto thee. And peace be unto all your helpers, for thy God helpeth thee. It is your God that sent you to us. Don't be afraid. We are here to help you. That's why God pushed us here. We are not here to betray you. We are not here to judas you. We are here to help you. The Bible says, then David received them and made them the captains of the band. I want to pray for every one of you. Help us of destiny. Help us of work, help us of business, financial help us, marital help us, career help us, academic help us. The Lord will send them to you. And every one of you, wherever you are, in the name of Jesus, I speak peace over your helpers. Listen to me, everyone, look at me here. If the people that God has sent to help you, if they get into crisis, you are finished. The journey of 10 years becomes 40 years. That's why whenever you are praying, you better be smart enough to pray for your helpers. If God has destined that you are going to rise through this person, and the person enters trouble with government, want to lock the person up, you know the rest of the story. 
<laughs> that is why I'm praying for you tonight. All your helpers, whether they have manifested or they are on their way, I speak peace upon them. Oh my God, what kind of amen is it? I speak peace upon your helpers. I speak peace upon your helpers. They will not enter into trouble. They will not see any evil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say loud, amen. Amen. Jump to verse 21 quickly. Jump to verse 21. We don't have time. The Bible says, and they helped David. Ah, you will receive help. I say you will receive help. The Bible says, and they helped David against the band of the rovers. For they were all mighty men of valor and were captives in the host. Verse 22. For at that time by day, they came to David to help him until it was a great host like the host of God. Some mighty men of valor who will help you against external aggression. Amen. Intercessors and prayer warriors. Amen. I mean, I'm begging every one of you open every strong. You need to get friends that know how to pray. All these gossipers you are surrounding yourself with, I'm sorry for your life. Friends that you people, you hang around, all you do is talk about rubbish that don't benefit you. Talk about other people. Talk about whatever does not concern you. You people can't pray. You can't pray together. Oh, you need to learn to check your circle of friends after tonight's meeting. You need some intercessor around you. You need some people when things are not going down, they can say, come on here, let's join hands together. Let's declare three days fasting together. And you people can get on the phone every night. And they keep interceding until that mountain is surmounted. You need such people around you. Not just gossipers, not just friends that they are only for shopping. Shopping. Rubbish. That's, that's all they do. Shopping partners. All uh, walking down. What do they call that thing? Window shopping. To just walk out. Those are the people you are around you. You need to check your friends list. And I'm praying for you tonight. That good friends. That will stand in the gap for you. In the place of prayer. That they will go on their knees in the middle of the night and cry to the Almighty God and mention your name and mention the names of your children and say, Lord, look at this, my sister. Look at this, my brother. I'm standing in the gap for him and for her and for our children until this matter is over. Such men, such women, everyone with your loud amen, the Lord is sending them your way. I don't like that amen. I said, the Lord is sending them your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. And verse 32. Verse 32, quickly, 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 verse 32. And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of times and to know what Israel ought to do, the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. You need men and women that will understand the season you are per time. They will understand your work and your business. They will understand what you stand for as the vision of that work. They will see the vision along with you. They will drink into your spirit. You need such men around you. And the Lord is sending such people your way. Amen. Go to verse 38 quickly. Go to verse 38. The Bible says, All these men of war that could keep rank. They didn't break their ranks. That could keep rank. Came with a perfect heart. They didn't come with a heart of deceit and a heart of betrayal. They came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king all over Israel. And all the rest also of Israel were of one heart. Somebody say with me, one heart. One heart. Ah, people like that are scars today, sir. Oh, they are scars around you. Even inside families, they are scars. And I'm talking about family, blood, the same blood. <laughs> ah, people with one heart. And they're all speaking one voice that know. The name of Jesus, this our brother must not fall. This our sister must not fall. This is what must happen. This is what must happen. People with one heart. People that could keep rank. Those who will not break their ranks. Those who are not men of double heart. No rebellion. Single-hearted workers. Not deceitful people. No double standard. Sincerity of the heart. The Lord will send such people your way. And look at the end of the story in verse 40. Verse 40, the end of that story. The Bible says, moreover, they that were near them, even unto Issachar and Zebulun and Naphtali, brought bread on asses and on camels and on mules and on oxen 
and meat, milk, cakes of figs, and bunches of raisins, and wine and oil. Can you see the way they were bringing materials? They were bringing materials. When they were coming to David's place, they didn't come empty and day. They were bringing things to help his life because he was hiding in the cave. You, you know the beginning of the story. He was hiding from Saul because Saul was going to kill him. There was no way he could get food and drink inside the cave where he was hiding. So when they were coming, they came with one heart. They were bringing everything that they would need. All that you need to succeed. All that you need to prosper. All that you need to be settled in this land and for you to move forward. Men and women that will bring them, the Lord will send them your way. And bunches of raisins and wine and oil and oxen and sheep abundantly. For there was joy in Israel. We call them helpers of joy. Those who will bring joy to you. That will not bring you sorrow. Because there are some people you meet. Few years down the line, you almost curse the day you met them. Am I saying something? You, you, you wish you didn't wake up that morning. You wish you didn't go out that day. You wish you stayed on your bed that day than meeting them. Because when you look back, you are like, how did I get here? How did I meet this man? This woman is a curse to me. How come? And there are people you meet till you die. You bless the name of the Lord for the day you came in contact with them. We call them helpers of joy. <laughs> And the Lord will be imparting you with them tonight. Amen. Second Corinthians 1 24. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. The Bible says, not for that we have dominion over your faith, but a helpers of your joy. So there are some people, they, they help your joy. They are excited when you are joyful. When they wake up in the morning, everything in their brain is, how can this guy be joyful? Help us of joy. Straight for your two and say, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, help us of joy. They are coming your way. Amen. If you are not going to say amen, I can shut down this meeting, believe me. I say, help us of joy are coming your way. Amen. Help us of vision are coming your way. Amen. Help us of resources are coming your way. Amen. Help us of peace are coming your way. Amen. Help us of administration are coming your way. Amen. Help us of operations are coming your way. Help us of orderliness are coming your way. Help us of decorum are coming your way. Help us of your organization are coming your way. Help us of security and order are coming your way. Help us of intercession, they are coming your way. Help us of provisions are coming your way. Help us of maintenance are coming your way. If you believe that, say the loudest, say amen. Lift up your two hands and say, Oh Lord, my Father. Send help us to me. Send help us to my work. Send help us to my business. Send help us to my family. Send me genuine help us. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer for yourself in one minute now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I was thinking you will be standing on your feet with that understanding and you will cry to the Lord. Help us of joy. Help us of my ministry. Help us of my work. Help us of my career. Help us of my finance. People that will not betray me. People that will not stab me at the back. People that will not sleep until I make it. Raise your voice, people of God. Mashaga. People that won't betray me. People that will not smile to my face and stab me at the back. Genuine helpers. Helpers of destiny. Abalakayada. Helpers of business. People that will help my career. I need them, oh God. Send them to me. Genuine helpers from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. Genuine help us. Genuine help us. You need that baptism tonight. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Please be seated. Myself and my wife, after Sunday, two days ago, we, we quickly went to Maryland for one of my mentors' birthday. He, he turned 60. And 
you know, we were just reflecting. I don't know, was it on the plane when we were coming back this afternoon? We were on the flight and we were just talking about some things. I mean, at this man's cocktail yesterday night, and we, we did it in the state of Virginia, at the cocktail party yesterday, some people were testifying. Some people were saying some things. Some people that they've been friends since 1971. And they've been like this ever since then. As everybody was talking, I was just looking. I said, Jesus. So there are still real friends around. They are just very few. But those few, the Lord will send them to you. Yeah. At a point in time, they wanted to do something. Years ago, they so want to do something. They need $100,000, $200,000. Just call 10 friends together. Oh, guy, I need some $100,000. Is that it? Okay. Just 10 of them. Okay. Each person, 10000 10, And they just drop it. There are still genuine people around. And they've been together. Some of them flew in all the way from Nigeria for the bread day. The commissioner of this, honorable this, commissioner of that. And they were all testifying from their elementary days to high school days to college. And they all kept on the legacy as genuine friends. No betrayer. No stabbing at the back. Lift your right hand. All unfriendly friends around you. All unfriendly friends around your children. All the unfriendly friends around your spouse. They pretend as if they love you, but they don't love you. They are actually coming to suck information so they can finish you. Within the next seven days, let the Holy Ghost expose them. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost strike them. There was a man in Nigeria years ago, late now, Chief MKO Abiola, that's his name. He was arguably the wealthiest man in the whole of Africa. Arguably. And he decided to run for presidency in Nigeria. I mean, even the blind knew he won the election. That is the blind that couldn't see, knew he won the election. But that was the first president that won, but never sat down on the chair. Now, check this out. The same friend that told him to run was the same person that sponsored his death. The same friend. Somebody say the same friend. The same person. The same person. It's not another one. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 10, 36, he said the man's enemies shall be that of his own household. Well, most of the times, you see, we are looking for the enemies far off. They are not far off. They are around us. David said, Psalms 119 from verse 96 now, 97. He said, oh, I love I the Lord. It is my meditation all the day. He said, thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Go check that verse out. Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Enemies are never far. They are always around. That's why I'm praying for you for the spirit of discernment. I mean, the spirit of discernment. Not to see men and women after the flesh. They come, they bring the gift, they laugh. You say, <laughs> the moment they are going, you say, Holy Ghost, what are you saying? Holy Ghost say, don't trust them. <laughs> you say, thank you, sir. Somebody is blessed tonight. I say somebody is blessed tonight. In the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet. We have to pray. I still have some things I was supposed to teach, but we, we need to pray. I feel that we need to pray. Because I could hear the Holy Ghost tell me that there are four people in this auditorium right now. Four people in this meeting right now. God needs to expose some unfriendly friends to you within seven days. Amen. Four of you, you are here now. You are not online. You are in this room. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Four. Four of you. So if you like, go home and just sleep like a rain tonight. And don't cry to the Lord. I say, Lord, who are the unfriendly friends in my camp? Who are the people that I need to know for who they really are? Quickly. 
Maybe some of them, you even still spoke to them this afternoon. Maybe some of them, you people even have a date this weekend to take lunch or dinner or whatever. And they are actually the ones putting fire on the problem. Ah, you Watch this. Look at blind Bartimaeus. Mark chapter 10. You know the story from 46 to 54. Blind Bartimaeus was a blind man. There was no way you could have located his way to the crusade where Jesus was. Because he was blind. You tell a blind man now, go to Galeria Mall. How will he get there? So somebody led him there. There was no way he would have gotten to the crusade ground. They invited him there. They took him there. Now check this out, sir. When the ministration began, and this man, they are told him, that guy coming, his name is called Jesus, he's so anointed. Oh, you just need to cry, he will heal you. The guy said, okay. The moment the ministration started in the room, that guy cried, oh, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Guess what? The same people that invited him to the crusade ground were the same people that told him to shut up. The same people. They were the ones around him. They were the ones that brought him. So sometimes it's not even everybody that invites you for prayer meeting that wants you to be delivered. Your understanding needs to come alive tonight. That's why you need to lift your two hands right now. Everybody and cry with a loud voice. Say, Father. Father. I don't like that cry. Say, Father. Father. Every unfriendly friend around me. Enemies pretending to be friends. Say, within the next seven days. Say, Holy Ghost. Expose them. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and cry to the Lord now, everyone. Is this how to pray this kind of prayer? Oh my God. I'm sorry for some people. Even if you are watching online, wherever you are all over the world, you need to pray. All unfriendly friends in my camp, they must be exposed. Holy Ghost, open my spiritual eyes. I must stop to see men and women after the flesh. Let me see them really for who they are. It doesn't matter who they are, friends, male or female, colleagues at work, business partners, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, whoever. Family members, cousins, uncles, nieces, nephews, neighbors, church members, wherever. Open my eyes, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. This will be your second prayer and your final prayer. Then I prophesy over you. I'm sure you all have your point of contact for your business and work. So you ought to bring it out right now. And, you know, while we were coming this afternoon, and I was, I was when we were on the flight, I brought out my iPad and I was just fine-tuning the message. I could hear in my spirit, man. I said, from what I saw yesterday, there are helpers in life that can stick with you for life. And I began to write it down on my iPad. I was just thinking about what we saw yesterday. 40 years friendship, 45 years friendship, and helping each other out, blessing each other, holding each other by the hand. I said, no, guy, you cannot be naked. Come on. What is it? Is that it? Don't worry, we sort it out. 24 hours is sorted. Don't worry about it. Now people that is even in their capacity to do it, they say, well, I'll get back to you. And they never get back. As a matter of fact, not only will they, will they not get back, they discourage other people that can do it. They discourage them. Don't mind the idiot. Mind him. Don't listen to her. She's a fool. Let's teach her a lesson. So this is your prayer. If you are serious with your, serious with your destiny, you lift your two hands and you will cry. I say cry. I didn't say say. I say cry. You will shout, say, Father. Send help us to me. To my family. To my children. To my spouse. 
to my work, to my business, to my career, to my finance. Help us all around her. Father, send them to me. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to cry now. I didn't say say, I said cry to the Lord. If you like, be looking around. Since you came here to look, no problem. Raise your voice. Yes. Pray for your spouse. Pray for your children. Pray for your work, your career, your business. That is why Jesus brought you here tonight. Divine help us. Not the ones that will capitalize on your problem and molest you. No. Not the ones that will say, before I do it, I must sleep with you. No. Genuine ones that will not abuse you, that will not take advantage of you. Genuine ones. Lord, send them to me. If I were you, I will bank this prayer into the future of my children. The people that will help my children in future without molesting them, without harassing them, without assaulting them. Lord, send them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Genuine helpers are the people that help you without molesting you. They will not see your underwear. Okay, uh, you want me to do that? Ah, that's easy. Come and meet me at uh, Sheraton Room 224. No. No. They will say, my sister, my brother, God has sent me to help you. I am not to abuse you in any way. Take, this is the number, this is the website, this is the address, this is the money you need, go. And they will pray for you and you will go. Those are the real helper. You see, all the serious parents, do you know what they will do? When they leave this place tonight, they will pray this prayer for their children. Those are the serious parents. So. Uh -huh. Not the ones that don't know what, they don't even know themselves. Now you stretch those, your point of contact, your point of contact, bring it out, if you have it now. Point of contact to yours, your work and your business. If you are watching online, bring it out now where you are. Bring it out, bring it out, as I prophesy over it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to speak 20 blessings into your life, into your business, into your career, to your ministry, into the work of your hands. And because I have received the commandment to bless, the blessings they will stick over you. All you need to do is stretch those things towards this altar. Close your eyes. And nobody's amen must overshadow your own. Every man, every woman that is serious with their destiny, your amen must be loud. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, as those points of contact are stretched toward this altar of power and fire, from tonight, receive business and career success. I don't like that, amen. I say receive business and career success. Your levels will change. Wherever your fathers and mothers could not reach, in a short time, you will get there. I say you will get there. Receive business ideas. I say receive business ideas. The business model, the work model, the revelation, the pattern that will shake the world. Let the Lord give it to you. Amen. I say you will make business progress. Amen. You will not go back. Amen. You will not be less. Amen. You will not reduce. Amen. Say louder, amen. amen. You will not decline. Amen. In the name of Jesus. 
This is number six now. Number five. Everybody, I want a loud amen. God will give you business and career enlargement. New business and career glory will rest on your life. I want a loud amen. Your glory will not be hidden. Your glory will not be destroyed. Your glory will not be dented. In the name of Jesus. I pray for somebody tonight. Your business and your work will take off. Can you say louder amen? amen. You will do well. Amen. From today, I prophesy a lifting over your life. Amen. A lifting over your business. Amen. A lifting over your career. Amen. I want a loud amen. Everybody, this is number 10. I prophesy open heavens. Amen. Let the heavens be open over you. Amen. Over your family. Amen. Over the work of your hands. Amen. Over your business. Amen. Over your career. Amen. Over your finance. Amen. Over your marriage. I say in the name of Jesus, I prophesy open heavens. Somebody shout open heaven. Shout it again. Say it one more time. Stretch for those materials here. In the name of Jesus, if anything will hurt you, if anyone will hurt you, God will expose that thing. Before you step into that deal, God will expose it. Before you sign that contract, God will expose them. Amen. Before you make that move, the Lord will expose them. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I prophesy new open doors for you. Amen. For every businessman, businesswoman here, I decree customers from the east. Amen. Oh, what kind of amen is this? I say customers from the east. Amen. Customers from the west. Amen. Customers from the north. Amen. Customers from the south. Amen. New job offers. Amen. For every career person here, new job offers. Greater offers for you. Double pay than what you have been receiving before. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number 14, everybody which allowed them in, heaven will endorse you. Heaven will endorse your work. Heaven will endorse your business. Heaven will endorse your career. Heaven will endorse the work of your hand. In the name of Jesus, everybody let the gifting in you come alive. The gifting, the potentials in you will come alive. Everybody receive explosive breakthroughs. I say receive explosive breakthroughs. Unhindered financial explosion. That shall be your portion. Oh, which your Lord, amen. Now, number 17, receive business victory. Oh, oh, Makaliba, Lakoroba, receive business victory. Everybody working in any organization, any parastatal here, any company, receive victory in your workplace. In that your office, in that your department, on that your floor, any gang up against you shall scatter. All the conspiracy shall scatter. Oh my Lord, my Bible tells me surely they shall gather, but not by you. Any gathering that is not to your favor, in the name of Jesus, let the Holy Ghost scatter that gathering. Can you say louder, Amen? Oh, you are here, you want to do something, but no money. You have ideas, you have business ideas, you have dreams, you have visions, but no money. If you can say, Lord, amen, heaven will connect you. I say, heaven will connect you. Heaven will connect you. The Lord will power those ideas for you. Can you say better, amen, people of God? Say better, amen, people of God. Number 19, two more, two more. Don't let your amen be low. The doors you have knocked before and they have not opened from tonight in the name of Jesus, let the Holy Ghost push them open. He said, I have said before you an open door. I have said before you an open door. Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 16 9, a great and effectual door is open unto me, but there are many adversaries. I decree all the doors you have been knocking, all the doors you have been knocking, all the doors you have been knocking over the years, and they are not opening. From tonight, let Holy Ghost open those doors for you. Doors of favor be open. Oh my God. Doors of favor be open. Doors of enlargement be open. Doors of multiplication be open. Doors of new contracts be open. Doors of new helpers be open. Let all those, your doors, let them pop open. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is the final prayer. Everybody look at me. As I turned to the back there, the Holy Ghost said, do part two of this next Tuesday. Hallelujah. I was supposed to teach on something. He said, do part two of it. And he, listen to me. The final prayer now. Do you know the prayer? 
as you are journeying, you will not be a victim of the law. There are billionaires in prison right now as I'm talking. They became victims of the law. Some, it was not a deliberate mistake. Maybe just a little paperwork somewhere they forgot. Or somebody was supposed to sign something, didn't sign, and whatever went wrong, and the government said, no, I mean, you have to go for it. So the Lord wants me to pray for you, the final prayer. Stretch those things to the altar. In the name of Jesus, you will not be a victim of the law. None of you will be locked in the prison by yard. You will not be locked behind bars. Your freedom will not be taken away from you. I decree the name of Jesus, none of you will end your journey in prison. And that is another way to say if you are here and you have any court case whatsoever, whether with the government, with IRS, with whatever, in the name of Jesus, the verdict shall turn out in your favor. As you are doing your businesses, as you are going about your career, in the name of Jesus, you will not end in the prison yard. You will enjoy the blessings with liberty. You will enjoy your blessings with freedom. It shall be well with you. You will do well in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Who will catch this prophecy? Your head will not reject prayer. I say your head will not reject prayer. Your head will not reject blessings. Your head will not reject prayers. Your head will not reject blessings. If I'm talking to you, shout an amen like a Christian. Everybody lift your two hands and give the Lord three loud hallelujah. Please be seated. Congratulations. If you are here, you are not born again. Can I pray with you quickly as we shut down this service? You are here, you are not born again. You want to give your life to Jesus. Anybody like that, just raise your right hand quickly so I can pray for you. Is there anybody you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ? I can pray for you quickly as we shut down. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So I'm going to be running this series, the second part of it, next week, Tuesday, if the coming of the Lord Jesus starts. If you are excited for what the Lord has done tonight and what he will do on Tuesday, give Jesus a big hand of praise. Amen. Listen to me. When you are coming next week, this thing you have come with, come with it again next Tuesday. Amen. Amen. Did you hear that? Bring it when you are coming next week, Tuesday. It is a new day for somebody here. Yeah. What the Lord said last month that he wants to raise financial giants. You shall be among the first set. In the name of Jesus. It is time to give to the Lord tonight. Amen. I don't like that clap and that shout. Let's give our offerings and our tithes quickly tonight. Remember the word of the Lord that says give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom. Please, if you are here, you want to give specially towards the building funds tonight. You need to be upstanding because I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to give towards the building funds. I'm going to sow a special seed towards the building funds tonight. You can be upstanding so I can pray with you. Please, let's hurry up. We have seven minutes to close. If you want to give using your debit and your credit cards, you can go to the backside there. One of these officials are there to assist you quickly. All the people watching online, wherever you may be, all over the world, you can also plug into this blessing. There is no barrier in the realm of the spirit. The same way you have been blessed by the ministration, ensure that you are giving to the Lord tonight. Glory be to God. You are giving towards the building fund, please, the upstanding. Lift up the seed for the building funds, not offering yet for the building funds. And if you are giving online, just raise your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to specially bless your name. I want to give you thanks and praise for all the people giving towards the building funds tonight. Lord, I ask that you build our lives. You build our destinies. Give us reasons to give more. Prosper us in all our ways. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Glory be to God.
Let's give our offerings quickly. If you are ready, you can lift up your offerings now, everyone. Lift up your offerings. Lift up your offerings. If you are giving online, just raise your right hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight for another opportunity to give to you. We are so grateful you have blessed us so much. And out of the abundance you have given to us, we have returned our 10%. Father, we ask that you please honor it, that you please accept it, bless it, make it available for your use, O oh God. Everyone giving offerings tonight, I decree your hands will never go down. Our harvest will look for us from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Money will befriend our destiny. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let's take these few announcements as we close in a few minutes. By the grace of God, on Friday, Friday we're going to be having um, a very important seminar here organized by the Eagles. Uh, please, can you just help us? God bless you, media. Thank you for clapping. This Friday, 7 p.m., the move from employee to entrepreneur. And the topics we're going to be looking at, basically starting a business in Texas, overcoming obstacles, Branding and social media marketing. Branding and social media marketing. So it's going to take place, I believe, is it this auditorium? Here, right? Okay. So it's going to take place in this auditorium. Time is 7 p.m. on Friday. I want to encourage every one of you, whether you're already a business owner or you want to start your own business, please ensure that you are here. Let us come and learn. No knowledge is lost. No knowledge is lost. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. And don't forget, please, next week Sunday, next week Sunday, um, like I announced this past Sunday, two days ago, I'm going to be praying for all the teenagers. All the teenagers, please um, ensure that you are in church on Sunday. Please, all parents, make sure that all your teenagers are in church on Sunday. I'm going to be ministering to them powerfully. The Lord wants me to pray for them concerning some things. Glory be to God. The Open Heavens Membership School started last Sunday. If you have not joined, you have not gone through the class, Please, you, can, you have just one more week, Grace. You can join this coming Sunday. It's going to bless you a great deal. And of course, good news. El Shaddai Congress is knocking the door gradually. November 13th to 16th, El Shaddai Congress 2019. November 13th to 16th. And the theme is what? Go higher. Go higher. Everybody, we shall be going higher in the name of Jesus. Service on Sunday is 10 a.m. I want to encourage every one of you, please do not come to church alone. And if you are, you see, uh, a lot of members were not in church on Sunday, you know, please ensure that you reach out to people. Following up is not the job of some sets of people. Evangelism is actually the, the responsibility of all Christians, all believers, all believers, okay? So ensure that you invite people to church on Sunday. And don't forget, maturity class starts by 920 Quite a lot of us are still missing maturity class. Please, let's be there on, on, on Sunday to come and learn at the feet of the master. And the Lord will continue to grow us in the things of the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. Do we have any guests in our midst as we close? Today is your first service in Open Heavens Church. You've never been here before. Anybody like that? You are a guest. It's the first time. Can you just be upstanding quickly? Do we have anybody? Okay, there is no... Oh, okay. Oh, can you see this beautiful mama right there? Let's make her warm. Let's celebrate her. Amen. Amen. Come on, can you clap some more? Come on. Church, stretch out your two hands to her and let's pray for her. Let's pray for her quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless your daughter. Lay your hands on her. Let it be well with her. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that the Lord will lay his hands upon you. And the Lord will do you well. Affliction will never rise again. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will give you a brand new beginning. The Lord will open the windows of heaven upon you. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Yeah. She actually looks like Mommy Ray, you know. Oh, okay. Oh, you are related. Yeah, looks like Mommy Ray. Some of you don't know who Mommy Ray is. Don't worry. Please be upstanding as we close. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. Hallelujah. Has anybody been blessed tonight at all? Give Jesus a big hand of Lift your two hands now, everyone. As you go tonight, the hand of the Lord will rest upon you. You shall lie down and not shall make you afraid. You shall lie down, your sleep shall be sweet. The Lord bless your going out and your coming in. Everybody still traveling this week, you go where you return well. The hand of the Lord is strong upon us. The eagles meeting on Friday is blessed. And as we come back on Sunday, your testimony shall be the first. 
so shall it be. In this room, I rebuke bad dreams for everyone. Any power tormenting you in your sleep, any power tormenting you in your dream, tonight in the name of Jesus, let the power of the Almighty God collide with those powers. Tonight, every one of you, the people watching online, you shall dream dreams of breakthroughs, dreams of deliverances, dreams of increase, revelational dreams. The Lord will show you what you need to know. So shall it be. Anyone that has immigration interview this week, you are returning back with your testimonies. Job interviews you have, you are returning back to your testimonies. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Join your hands with your neighbor as we close from Psalms 19 and verse 14. Everybody with a loud voice want to go. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you. I love you all. Have a wonderful night. Give five people a hug and tell them I love you. Have a wonderful night in Jesus' name.